Okay, so we are at uh, UIC, the Human Performance Lab. Um, and uh, we have an opportunity this year to create a, a soccer science department. So um, the technical staff and also the management from uh, the club, they, they want to invest more money into the development of science in soccer. So we have a great opportunity to do more advanced testing this year. And it's a VO2 max test on a treadmill. So we see a hunter running uh, behind us. So this test is to, to assess aerobic uh, endurance for the players. So from this test, we get uh, two, uh, three, da three, three important data. One is heart rate maximal. And from these numbers that I know during the training session, what kind of intensity we reach based on the heart rate maximal. So for example, we're gonna play 10 v 10 in a tight space. We're gonna be at 85 to 90% of max heart rate. Uh, we're gonna play a 5v5. We're gonna be at 80 to 95% of max heart rate. And this heart rate max for each player is different. So we need to assess it at the beginning of the year to make sure we know exactly the intensity of the drill for each individual player. I mean, I'm just fortunate enough that I already had Tony at Louisville and we've done this already. So for a lot of the guys, this is some of their first times doing it. So it's, it's nice to already know what to expect a little bit, but it's still not going to be fun. It's just different because uh, you have to just breathe through your mouth. You're running with a mask on. so. Yeah, you, know, you just gotta, you know, you gotta focus and, and not let that bother you, because um, it's just, I mean, it's just different. Um, you're not used to only breathing through your mouth, so it just takes a little bit to get used to. But we get two numbers here that we can do on a field test, and it's VO2 max, and that's that's related in soccer to the um, distance covered during a game. So VO2, it's um, the oxygen consumption at maximal effort, and the science research they shows that it's well related to the distance covered in a game. So usually center midfielders, they hit the highest number. So Logan Post, Daniel Paladini, they're going to be probably Joel Limper as well. And they're going to be at high numbers, 64, 65. That's the number we're looking at. Center back forwards, more powerful athletes. They're going to get a VO2 max around 58, 60. And then outside back, they may hit high numbers as well. So by position, we can have an idea where they're going to be at. So soccer science is huge because we can monitor the players a lot more. I mean, it used to be uh, you do a soccer training session and it just you get a subjective feeling on how the players feel. So you're gonna say, I take for example Jalil as an example. You're gonna say, oh Jalil looks tired right now, or, or he looks good right now. He looks pretty fit. But it's all subjective. It's based on what you see on the field. And there is, I mean, it's. It's a good uh, good option to be able to see how the player feels with the communication with him and everything. But if we can have objective data to back up how the players, what the physiology of the athlete is, that's the best. Because now we have data to show to the head coach, the technical staff, we can show them what's happening with each player from a physiological standpoint. Well, quite a different experience. I've never done it before. But uh, it's good, you know. It definitely pushes you uh, to the max. And I think it's... Uh, Good parameter in which uh, Tony kind of, you know, decide uh, how hard to push in preseason. So I think that, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a good start. But I think the last uh, five minutes, I, uh, you know, kept trying to, to push myself to keep, to keep going. But uh, I think probably around the last the, the last five minutes is when uh, you start definitely feeling, feeling the, the burn in your legs and, uh, um, you know, mentally uh, getting into your head. <laughs>